We are back with Nikachu. I'm the one, James. We are doing it a little bit different this time. I'm going to give you five cards from three different archetypes, 15 cards total, and you're going to tell me which archetype is good right now, which archetype used to be good and is no longer good, and which archetype has never been good. So it's like, you know, a regular show, but it's like a bonus. I'm going to look at these cards, give my judgment, and then I'm going to figure out if they were ever good in combination with these other cards. Exactly. And hopefully, instead of doing it card by card and not really knowing the context, you'll get more context, and then you'll, you'll eventually want to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know? Yeah, it's possible. By the end of this entire series, uh, we're going to have like a gameplay between me and you. Before we get started, I have some big news. I have just started a Patreon. So if you would like to help out the show monetarily, if you have that available to you, or you would even like to be a part of the show yourself, join my Patreon. The link is in the description below. I'm going to navigate this maze just like Yugi and his friends navigated this maze against the rhyming twin brothers of some episode of Yu-Gi-Oh. Ooh, we've got Graph. Melabran with Mela Branch of the Burning Abyss. It is a fiend effect. Attack 1000, defense 1500. Useless, as many people <laughs> have taught me. If you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. Uh, you can only use one of these effects of Graph Malabranch of the Burning Abyss per turn and only once that turn. So if I control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss, there's like many Burning Abyss cards? Yes. Okay, so if I have something else, this thing gets blown up. Right. So if I have something else and I just play this, it just dies immediately? Yes. Okay. <laughs> The archetype builds itself. It does build itself. All right, so we're going to use the... Yeah, we're going to use these effects once e this turn. Uh, if you control no spell slash trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's pretty cool. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your deck, except Graph Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. So I can get any other... Burning Abyss card. So it dies. I basically get something from my deck and put it directly into play. Right. That's insane. That's <laughs> absolutely insane. It's like a tutor. Yeah. And, um, but the problem is, how good is this thing by itself? But then you could just destroy it yourself. You could destroy it right? yourself. Yeah. yeah. If it's sent to the graveyard. If we blow this thing up, no problem. And also, hold on, how, how does special summoning work again? We, like, sacrifice something in play to summon something else? That's a normal summon, if it's level 5 or higher. Oh, that's a normal? You can do unlimited amount of special summons for no cost. Okay, for no, uh... Okay, but, like, there is a way of summoning bigger creatures by sacrificing one in play. That is your normal summon per turn. You only get one per turn, like a land drop. But so uh, that's how I can sacrifice this thing into the graveyard and then get something even bigger and better. If you do so it's like summon this, but if you special summon this mm -hmm. and then you tribute summon it by tributing by tributes by normal summoning a level five or six monster, you will not get the graveyard effect. You can only use one of them per turn, one one effect per turn. Okay, but I just wait till next turn. You could wait till next turn. And hope you don't die. Okay, cool. So it's like, yeah, if I don't die, that's true. You know, giving someone one turn in Yu-Gi-Oh, that, uh, that could be a death sentence. Like, <laughs> yeah. this thing can't win on this turn. It's useless. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I think this is pretty interesting. And if we control no spell or trap cards, we can special summon this from our hand for nothing. Okay, very cool card. All right. Has potential. Moving on to the next card in the archetype. And also, I heard that Yu-Gi-Oh is all about searching your deck for cards, and that does that, so... Okay, we got Sir Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. <laughs> it's all to say, they, they're all from uh, the Burning Abyss. Yes. Okay, three Dragon Balls. It's bigger than the last one. We got 1,600 attack, 1,200 defense. Fiend effect. If you control a monster that is not Burning Abyss. Oh, it's the same thing? Yep. Okay, so, if, it's, so basically everything has to be the Burning Abyss. So the ability here is if you control no spell slash trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Burning Abyss monster in your graveyard, except uh, Sir Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, special summon it. So instead of 
getting something from our deck, we're now bringing reanimating something from the graveyard. Yes. That's also insane. Yeah. So we could have sacked that last thing. So it gets sacked. We could get this. The thing comes back, right? Or does that not work? Well, Can I tutor this thing and then bring the last guy back? Yes. So we bring out Sir Get Back Graph. All right, the combo is being assembled. <laughs> Next. All right, so now you know what those two do. Let me go. Let me take you towards yeah. the third one. Also from the family of the Malabranch <laughs> of the Burning Abyss, we got Skarm. Also three Dragon Balls. <laughs> this is a completely arbitrary attack and defense. So what are your abilities? So this one is if you control no spell slash trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also the same. So during your end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can add one level three dark fiend type monster from your deck to your hand, except Skarm, Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. Interesting. Well, honey, you said we can only... Rules check. You can only special summon once per turn? You can only normal summon once per turn. Special summoning is nothing special. You can do that in limited times. Okay, okay. Gotcha. So this okay, one, so we could get this. If it's in the graveyard during your end apparently. phase, you get to search for a level three dark fiend. Like this card only activates at end of turn, which means you have to pass the turn. The greatest danger of all of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you know what? Passing? You never know when Kaiba's gonna Kaiba's gonna uh, cast uh, three blue eyes white dragons and end you immediately. Exactly. Okay. Now, there's two more cards in this archetype. Yep. One of them I'll read, I'll have you read, is a really cool one. Oh, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Three black dragon balls. That's special. <laughs> okay, it's a warrior XYZ effect. Two level three monsters. That makes no sense to me. Uh, once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and choose a number from one to three. Then send that many cards from the top of your deck to your graveyard. Uh, until the end of this turn, this card gains 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard this way. If the card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Burning Abyss card in your graveyard, except this card, add it to your hand. What does that mean? Like, if it attacks, you can send it back to your defense phase. Is that like Vigilance or something? Yeah, it... it well, no, it's kind of like the opposite of Vigilance. Like, this card, like, clearly wants to be in defense position because it has 2,500 defense. But if you mill three, mm -hmm. it, it, it gains 1,500 attack. 500 for each card you mill. Yeah. So you go to 2,500 attack... You can attack over your opponent's monster or attack your opponent directly, and then it goes back into defense because it's going to lose the 1500 attack and go back to 1000 at the end of the turn. It just lets it, it lets it go back to defense. But I don't get it. Like, isn't it, uh, so hold on, in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you attack with something, you can't defend with it anymore? No. Like, oh, you, you, can okay. never, you can never so block like... or defend with your stuff. Your, your opponent just gets to attack into your, into your monster. Okay, yeah, so it is like uh, Vigilance, right? You attack, and then you're ready to block. Yeah, That's how I'm yeah, interpreting kind of, this. Yeah, kind of. It just doesn't, you're just not really blocking in Yu-Gi-Oh, so it's like hard to explain. Isn't it like you just trample over? You um, have to trample through the monsters? You can only trample through the monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh if it's in attack position. If it's in defense position, and you attack over this with like a 4,000 attack monster, you're not going to take any life points. Oh, okay, so if it's in defense position... You don't take any damage. No. If it's There's an attack no position, you do. Ah. Okay, interesting. Okay. You attack me, well, I can attack over you. Exactly. But this one gives it, like, pseudo-vigilance to attack over your opponent's thing, and then switches it to defense so that you can't get attacked over yourself. Okay, let's... Okay, what does this card even mean? What the hell is two level three monsters? Um, this card is, is called is like an cost? XYZ, or an Xyz monster. Um, mm -hmm. This... Two level three monsters is the requirement to summon this card out of your extra deck. One of your 15 card mm -hmm. companion zone cards. Oh, uh, card. yes. it's a so, broken card. So you can like special summon one of your Burning Abyss out of your hand if you control no spell or trap cards. And then you can like normal summon another one and then overlay them yep. on top of each other and then summon this out of your extra deck. You have to overlay yes, them? Yes, you have to overlay them on top. And then you can usually for exceed, exceed monsters, 
you can detach one of the Xyz materials that you use to overlay with for to make this to use their abilities. What happens when you overlay? Is it like mutate or something? Kind of, yeah. Wow, they're just combining all the messed up mechanics of MTG and trying to make it playable in Yu-Gi-Oh. Pretty sure this came out before Mutate came out. Okay, so well, uh, magic. I know now know where uh, Magic R and D's uh, inspiration is coming from. It's coming from their competitors here. I think so. Okay, so we have to mute. So we mutate creatures, then we unmutate them to get this thing. You don't unmutate them. It's this Dante stays on top of the stays on top of the materials, and then you okay. and then you take a material and put it in the graveyard to use the effect of Dante. What is a material? Material is uh, the monster. Like, say you have a graph in defense mode because you summoned it, and then you normal summon like mm -hmm. Skarm out of your hand. You can yep. put them on top of each other, graph and Skarm. Okay. Yeah. And then you put Dante from your extra deck on top of those two monsters. Okay. Then you can detach the Skarm because you, mm -hmm. you don't want to detach the graph because you use that ability to special summon the graph. So you can't and you can't use. So the, hunt is like a material, just a card. It's just one. It, it, yeah, you detach the Skarm. To, to to use the ability to mill cards, and then on your end step, no, I'm you just can... like wondering, like, why aren't they calling it just a card instead of detach one material from this this card? It's kind of like a oh, keyword, no, but that's a a and a card attached to an Xyz monster is just called a material. Okay, sure. Yes. So we uh we choose so we 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 detach one of the mutated creatures to mill cards, and then this thing gets big. This seems like jank. <laughs> I think this is supreme jank. To mutate card. First off, mutate is a real garbage mechanic in Magic. To mutate cards, to get this thing out, so that I can mill some cards, so I can attack and defend with it. At the to give it vigilance. That's what you're telling me here. I'm mutating creatures together, so I can special summon this guy to mill three cards, so that it give him the ability to have vigilance. Very underwhelming. That is very, very well. For a total potential plus 1,500. Oh, wow. Very exciting. All right. It's time to look at the last card. Yeah, let's look at the last card. It's a better combo with this card somehow. First three cards were really exciting. Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. For six black Dragon Balls. We've got uh, <laughs> attack 2,500, defense 2,800. It's a fairy XC effect. Two level six monsters. So you need so we need two le two monsters that are level six. Is that what this means? Yep, and then put them on top of each other. And, and then, put them on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah, mutate them. You can also uh XC summon this card by sending one burning abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard, then using one Dante monster you control as material, transfer its materials to this card. It's summoned this way. The following effect cannot be activated this turn. Once per turn, quick effect. You can detach one material from this card. Send one card from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, that card could have potential. This, if this card is your possession, if this card is in your possession, is destroyed by your opponent's card and <laughs> sent to your graveyard. You can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Well, how many great Burning Abyss cards are from our extra deck? I don't even know that. I showed you the two most relevant ones, but there's one. There's one other one as well that that can discard the, that can discard a Burning Abyss card to draw a card. This is a really funny looking archetype because it looks like you can tutor for a bunch of stuff, and they sort of just bounce off of each other for value. But the payoff looks like trash. <laughs> like I don't, I don't see the payoff here. <laughs> and on top of that, like we talk about, like you have to pass the turn to even like get this thing going. Um, okay, I guess I got some idea. I'm, like I might be glossing over this card a little bit because it's like pretty wordy. You know, we have once per turn, we can detach one material, and like we can't detach these things infinitely. Send one card from your extra deck to the graveyard. I don't know what that card would be. Right, and then if this card... Be uh, it could be any your... card. Yeah, it could be any card. It could be something busted. It could be a boat. <laughs> it could be a plane. It could be a Nikachu. Yeah. Could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, that's Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. And you can just plop this by discarding a Burning Abyss card. Burning Abyss monster card. 
Um, and you just plop this on top of Dante after you make the Dante. Now this is it. Yeah, we need we need two Burning Abyss cards, the Dante, and then this thing. This is the most uh, convoluted sandwich <laughs> that I've ever tried to uh, order at Subway. What would be the tomato? <laughs> oh, God. I think the tomato are these, like, Skarm cards. Yeah, this is the and the, the the sir and the graph. Yeah, I don't there, think, there are uh, many other meat. Um, malabranches of the burning abyss, but they're not as relevant to the archetype as these. Okay, okay. Now we've we've conjumbled the thoughts and just jumble the word. We've conjumbled the thoughts of the burning abyss archetype. Now let's move on to the second archetype. I'm really scared if the next archetype looks really bad because then that means one of these car one of these archetypes were like really good at one point. <laughs> okay. Um this one's gonna have um this second archetype's gonna have a bonus card because I need to give the bonus card to give context to the other cards. And this is the bonus card, the sure. first card of the archetype. The Dark Magician! Yes! I see this every episode. <laughs> Alright. Seven dragon balls. Wow, that's expensive. Uh, attacks for 2,500, defense of 2,100. I have an attacks for as much in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. What's your life totals in Yu-Gi-Oh? In the, in, the, in the anime, it's like 4,000, but in Yu-Gi-Oh! in the competitive, it's 8,000. Yeah, it's different. All right, so I guess Dark Magician doesn't kill on the spot, even in the, even in the anime. Spellcaster Normal, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. All right, yeah, it is... Literally a vanilla, yes. vanilla grizzly bear. It is a grizzly bear, but a lot more. It's like a, if grizzly bear, if a grizzly bear had like five power, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. All right, let's go ahead and power, now that I you have the context, good. which is the dark magician, level seven dark spellcaster, twenty five hundred attack, twenty one hundred defense, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. Now you can read this card. Are we building Grandpa's deck? The dark <laughs> magical circle. And then when this card is activated, look at the top three cards of your deck. Uh, then you can reveal one Dark Magician or one spell slash trap that specifically lists the card Dark Magician in its text among them. And add it to your hand. Wow, this is like the most garbage tutor of all time. But it can look for a spell slash trap card instead. Oh no, but it can only find one that says Dark Magician. Um... Okay, so we put it into our hand. Also place the remaining cards on top of your deck in any order. Oh, it's literally Ponder. If Dark Magician is normal or special summage to your field, uh, except during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. You can only use each effect of Dark, dark Magical Circle once per turn. Well, you know what? This makes Dark, dark Magician like actually a slightly playable card instead of being a complete vanilla nothing. Yeah. And this is and this stays and on your board as well as a continuous spell card. So when it's activated... Actually, how do you activate this thing? You just say activate? Yes, you say activate dark magical circle. Can I ponder every turn? That's uh, no, it's well, only I don't know when it's activated. Uh, Activating yeah. it is putting so it from your hand it. into play. After it's in play, oh. it's, you can no longer activate it like that. Okay. It's just, it's the ETB. Right, right. It's like if, if an enchantment had an ETB, but also had a different effect. Right, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so we're gonna, we activate, so ETB, look at the top three cards, put Dark Magician or a magi Dark Magician spell slash trap card. Okay. All I right. think it's a decent card. It is time to look at a card that the, that the Dark Magical Circle can get. Yes, we can get the Magician Salvation! When this card is activated, you can set one Eternal Soul directly from your deck. Um, what does that mean, set? Like, put it into play? Uh, put it into play face down. That's what oh, set okay. means. Oh, I like it. You like set down. I gotcha. If you normal or special summon Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl, except during the damage step, you can target one of those monsters. Summon... Sorry, special summon one dark magician or dark magician girl from your graveyard with a different name that uh with a different name than that monster you can only use this effect of magician's salvation once per turn you can only activate one magician's salvation per turn so when it's activated so when it's like played i can set one eternal soul so we can get something from uh 
So hold on, what are, what are they trying to say? If you normal or special summon Dark Magician. So like when it's in play, when I play Dark Magician, I'm going to get some effect. Yes. You can summon a Dark Magician or Dark Magician girl from your graveyard with a different name of the thing you summon. So if you summon the girl, you can summon Dark Magician out of your graveyard. If you summon the Dark Magician, you can summon a Dark Magician girl out of your graveyard. <laughs> okay, that was a really convoluted way to explain that yes. on the card. <laughs> I know. Um, but you do get, you get to set. You play one, you can get the other. Yes. <laughs> it should just say that. Um, and then you can only use this effect once per turn, and you can only activate one per turn, and then when this is activated, you can set Eternal Soul from your deck. So let's go ahead and read Eternal Soul. Yeah, let's go look at Eternal Soul. These all just chain off of each other. So, like, so, so far I like this. You can, like, find, you can ponder into a card, which now tutors for a card. Yes. So Eternal Soul is every Dark Magician in your monster zone is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. So it sounds like they have Hexproof. Uh, if this face-up card leaves the field, destroy all monsters you control. Oh, that sounds terrible. You can only use the following effect of uh, Eternal Soul once per turn. You can activate one of these effects. Special summon one Dark Magician from your hand or graveyard. Add one Dark Magic Attack or Thousand Knives from your deck to your hand. I still got I got to internalize it. Oh, hold on, like, um... Oh, so, okay, if this, so if this is face up, and you blow the, if someone else blows this up, then we blow up all, they blow up all our monsters. They can't blow up Dark Magician, because they, it gives them hex proof, but they can blow up this, and blow up all our other monsters. Right. Well, that's a horrible, horrible downside. Um, okay, and then you can only use the following effects, Eternal Soul once per turn which is special summon one dark magician from your hand or graveyard or add one dark magic attack or thousand eyes to your deck to your hand. Okay, so it's a pretty sick... It's more tutors. It's just these are cards that tutor for this and tutor for that, and then all of a sudden you're, uh, you can get smacked by some dark magician. Yep. Which unfortunately um, only hits you only for like 25% of your life points. Yes. Uh, dark, dark magic attack or thousand knives are not very good cards and not super relevant to the archetype. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to... So you told me this was an actually an archetype. The but I guess it could have been card. a tier 5 archetype. It's possible. Next card is this one. Timius! Uh, the United Dragon. Alright, Blue Eyes White Dragon, step aside. Because we have the United Dragon. Nothing stronger than Dragons United. I agree. And it's uh, for 8 Dragon Balls. Uh, 2,800 attack, defense of 1,800. Okay, we got a dragon effect. You can send one spell caster monster or one spell slash trap that mentions Dark Magician from your hand uh, or face up field to the graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand during your main phase. You can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. Including a spellcaster monster, you can only use each effect of Timius the United Dragon once per turn. Okay, now the thing that boggles my mind is, was there an extra deck like back in 1998 or something? Like isn't Dark Magician just like an old archaic card? It is an old ar archaic card, but they came out with newer cards more recently to work, to make Dark Magician into an archetype. Wow, it's like if Wizards of the Coast tried really hard to turn the Grizzly Bear into a competitive card with other cards. I mean, they they sort of have tried to do that, for at least for Commander. Yeah, don't they have, like, two a, twos a, a Lula or box. something like that? A Layla? A Lula? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some, uh, some Commander card, like, a legendary Commander card for all your Grizzly Bears in your deck. Right. Because I, like, this is, like, this, I thought, like, wow, this is an old archetype. And then all of a sudden, the extra deck... The extra deck, well, then that's... Okay. I don't even know what this thing does, but it gets cards from your extra deck, which is uh, good enough for me. And you can fusion <laughs> summon one fusion monster. Yet, yeah, using monsters from your hand or field as material, including the spellcaster monster, you can only use this effect of Timius once per turn. Well, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a deck that tutors for tutors, the tutors that digs it. It looks like it gets a lot of consistency and a lot of strength. All right, let's look at the last Strength card. Strength and consistency. Strength and consistency. Okay. The formula 
for Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, last card in the Dark Magician archetype is that I'm going to show you because there's a lot, a lot more. Dark Magician is like a fan favorite kind of archetype, you know, because it's Yugi's deck and yeah, everything from the anime. So they have a billion cards, and I had to kind of choose five, and I even couldn't even include Dark Magician itself, so it had to be the bonus card. But this is this, <laughs> this is the card that I'm choosing as the last card to mention here with Dark Magician. Yeah, if anyone wants to uh, be Yugi, I mean, they have to play the Dark Magician deck. There's just no way around it. I know. If you're going to cosplay Yugi, you better be having, ha have a deck of Dark Magicians with you. Oh. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. That is, is that is not a dragon, or is that a typo on Yu-Gi-Oh's uh, Yu -Gi part? It's not a dragon. There's a difference between dragons and dragoons. Yeah, this is a spellcaster. Weird. Okay, this is attack 300, defense 2500. Yeah, it's a spellcaster. What is that, like a planeswalker? Kind of. They cast spells. All right, they can cast spells itself. Fusion effect. Dark magician. Dot. Red eyes, black dragon, or one dragon effect monster. Was it like you need to have all three of these or one of these on the battlefield? Um, there. If you read the the card above it, the Tam the Tam uh, Tamias the United Dragon. This mm -hmm. can fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material, including a spellcaster. So to the Tamias the United Dragon that you just read ha can summon yeah. the Red Eyes Dark Dragon Dragoon out of your extra deck. But there are a lot of ways that you can oh, summon really Dragoon out of your extra deck with other fusion spells and things like that. Not not just the okay. Tamias, but um, that's basically the summoning requirement, is to have Dark Magician plus Red Eyes or a Dragon Effect monster. Oh, that wasn't a dot. That was a plus. It's okay. plus, yes. You, you gotta look at these cards with a magnifying <laughs> glass. If that's a, That could be a comma for crying out loud. <laughs> Okay, cannot be destroyed by card effects. Neither player can target this card with card effects. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent's control. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. You can use this effect a number of times per turn, up to the number of normal monsters used as fusion material. For, uh, for this card, once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, with a quick effect, you can discard one card negate the activation and if you do destroy that card and if you do that this card gains 1000 attack and so Han, are we like flinging the cards that we fusioned with this card no you might have to read that sentence again you can yeah use... i might have to read this it sentence. does you kind of destroy flame. one monster you destroy... oh sorry yeah. sorry if i yeah uh you can destroy one monster your opponent's control and if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack, you can use this effect uh, a number of times per turn, up to the number of normal monsters used as fusion material. Okay, so uh, for the number of monsters as we have fusion material, I can blow up their board and then basically attack them to their face yes. with their own, their own creatures or their own monsters. Yes. That's insane. Although you have to <laughs> hope that they, if they have nothing in play, I mean, it does nothing, right? There's nothing in play, you have a 3,000 attack Red Eyes Dark Dragoon that uh, cannot be targeted by card effects. Yeah. Gigantic and can't haste be, and, and can't be destroyed by card effects. It basically has Shroud. Well, it, yeah. it, and it also can't be... It has, Shroud, it has like hexproof indestructible, basically. Yeah, exactly. Sweet card. A little convoluted to get in play, but uh, ideally... It's not gonna matter. Everything costs nothing in this game. <laughs> Everything costs nothing. Everything's zero mana. So like, what? What? How hard is it to get anything in play? I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty easy. You can do anything you want to in Yu-Gi-Oh, depending on what you put in your deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what you want to do. You can probably do it. It's just a matter of is your opponent gonna stop you or not, basically. I think it's really strong, but it can't kill in one shot. I'm just wondering if there's some sort of synergy or combos with these cards. Um, I mean, outside, it's it. It looks so far like if they're just meant to chain one card into another to get the Timias to get the uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragon. I mean, I think it's very very good, but I don't see any like combo potential. Whereas in the first, the first the first pile of cards, the first archetype, it looked like 
you know, the cards chained off of each other. If one goes into the graveyard, well, you can get it back and then tutor out for something and, you know, sacrifice. They had a lot of, uh, a lot of good synergy. Whereas this one, I don't feel the synergy, but I see the consistency in getting these things out. But I don't know if it'll, like, win the game on the spot. If you get, like, like for example, let's say we go first. And we get Red Eyes Dark Dragoon out. It does nothing, right? I get, or you attack for 3,000, I guess. Well, you can't attack on your first turn. Oh, really? Yeah. So everyone has summoning sickness on their first turn? On the first turn of the game, yeah. But if your opponent's going second, they can kill you. <laughs> That's insane! Is, is, uh, under some circumstances, do you want to go second in Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, there's decks that dedicate, that dedicate themselves on just going second, killing your opponent. Yeah, the act so you can't turn one win unless you go second. Wow, that's a massive rule that I just learned really late in the series. <laughs> well, you can turn one win if you burn your opponent. Okay, so you have to burn them down. Yes. But no attacking. Okay. You have to like burn them or mill them out. So it's So it's impressive, but uh so you can't even win on turn one. You gotta be definitely on the draw. And then and this actually benefits you big time for being on the draw because your opponent like spews their board out and then you play this thing and say, okay, you can <laughs> send all that, all your uh, monsters to your face. Uh, and then I also, I can attack you for like 3000. Can you attack with all the monsters or only one monster? You can attack with however many monsters you want that are in attack position, but you only get five, you only get like oh, five total monsters and one in your extra monster zone. So six total possible. Okay. We're going to get all the magicians out, the dark magician, yes. the dark magician girl. All right, it's time to go on to the last archetype. This one's going to have a lot of yep. reading, so we're going to have to try to do this a little bit fast. Archetype number three, Primeval Planet Perlurino. When this card is activated, which is a spell card, uh, you can add one Tier Laments monster or one visa's star frost from your deck to your hand fusion monsters and tier laments monsters you control gain 500 attack which is useless in this game if tier laments monsters you control or in your graveyard is shuffled into the deck or extra deck except during the damage step you can target one card on the field destroy it you can use you can only use this effect of primeval planet perineo once per turn you can only activate one pr primeval planet perineo once per turn so you can only use the effect once per turn you can only activate once per turn but i thought you could only activate once per turn anyway yeah you can only when this card's activated you can add a three elements monster but there's other effects of the card that you can use more than uh, once per turn as well yeah 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 they're, they're kind of like both once per turn okay gotcha so like you when, when it says you can only on activate field, one per turn, it. It, it's, it's, you can only activate one out of your hand and then get the ability. So you can't even attempt to activate another one. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's like other P tier elements cards out there. There is a, another tier element field spell. Yes. Yeah, whatever, whatever that means. But the, the, the tier the, elements. This one here is a field spell. Like it says uh, the, the symbol next to spell card is like the world enchantment card mm -hmm. that we've gone over in the past. Um, this one okay. stays on your board in the field zone after you activate it. Okay. And then, uh, what is the point of this thing? It, what does it do? It's, you, I know it buffs up the monsters, but I have the option to, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. You can only use this effect once per turn. And the cost is if a tier elements monster you control or, or in your graveyard is shuffled into the deck. Well, that is weird. Or extra deck. So if I shuffle something back into my deck... I can blow something up. Yes. That sounds terrible. That is the opposite of value. <laughs> well, blowing something up is value. This sounds like the start of some sort of weird, janky, like, shuffle my cards back into my deck archetype. No. Okay. Tier Laments. <laughs> Tier Laments. Haveness. Aqua Effect. When your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, quick effect... You can sum special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, send the top three cards of your deck in, uh, to the graveyard. If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, uh, except during the damage step, apparently, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck by placing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand, field and or graveyard, including this card from your graveyard, on the bottom of the deck... 
What? Hold on. <laughs> Including this card from your graveyard on the bottom of the deck in any order? You can only use a f each effect of Tier Elements Haveness once per turn. I mean, hold on. Including this card from your graveyard on the bottom of the deck in any order. Hold on, are we putting things back on the bottom of our deck? Yes. So are we doing an exchange of cards in play or... Um, it sounds like this one thing sounded pretty powerful. You can special summon this card from your hand uh, when the opponent activates a monster effect. And as you do, send the top three cards to the graveyard. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effects, except during the damage, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck by placing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand. I really don't even understand what this card's trying to do. <laughs> It's, it's trying I don't to understand fusion, fusion cards well enough. Yeah, it's trying to. Yeah, I, I see that part. It's trying some. It's trying very hard to do something. <laughs> uh, fusion cards are fusion monsters are in the extra deck. So when this triggers, if it's if this is sent to the river by a card effect, except during the damage step, you can return this to your the bottom of the deck. Okay. So if it goes to the graveyard, I can then put it on the bottom of my deck? Yes, and then you put the fusion monster in play from your extra deck. And I have to mill it from the top three cards of my deck, right? You don't have to mill it from the top three cards, but you can... If, like, say you have a different tier limit monster, and that monster mills cards also, and you mill the halfness, halfness effect will trigger. That's terrible. Unless you stack the top of the deck with halfness. Right. Which, uh, I mean, I don't know how good this deck is at stacking anything on the top. Um, I want to tell you, th there, there are a couple, there are a few different tier limits cards, and they have similar effects like this. Like, if they're sent to the graveyard, mm -hmm. put them back, um, put, put them back and summon something from your extra deck. That's kind of like the gimmick. Is this like some weird dredge card or something? Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of like, like the, the gimmick of this deck, is to like, put it in the graveyard, m like mill them over into your graveyard, and then put them back into your deck on the bottom and then and fusion for, summon. for an effect yeah, and then fusion summon yeah. yeah fusion summon big creatures by putting your cards back into your deck okay really weird yeah kind of like kind of like dredge all right let's move on to the next one which is scary it looks like garbage but you know you play against dredge and it just completely destroys you yeah it's, it's like you've never completely died to a destroys it's you. like it's like you some people, certain people have never died to a narcomy but <laughs> exactly you know you look at that guy, ah this is pathetic and then all of a sudden your your life total starts at like eight yeah uh there's three narcomubas on the battlefield <laughs> among, amongst a bunch of other stupid three three creatures yeah and, and then you look at those creatures and you're like those suck and then you realize that they all come out for free yeah uh all right let's go ahead and move on to the next tier limit card all right tier limit scream if a monster or S, monsters, is normal or special summoned, and you control a tier elements monster, or Visa's Starfrost, except during the damage step, you can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Also, for the rest of this turn, all monsters your opponents control lose 500 attack. That's pretty big. Or, or not, <laughs> depending <laughs> if attacking matters. If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can add one tier elements trap card from your deck to your hand. Uh, ooh, so we have a tutor. Uh, you can only use each effect of Tier Elements Scream once per turn. Okay, all right. So we can, if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, we have a tutor to make. Uh, so uh, what's a tier? So any Tier Elements. So it has, just has Tier Elements in the name, or tier, or does it mean Tier Elements like if Tier Elements is even mentioned in the card text? In the name. Okay, has to be in the name. So we can use this card to go find our Tier Elements Haveness. This card adds a tier limit trap from deck to hand. Oh, trap. Okay. And this last one was a cre uh, monster. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, so since I don't you've, know any tier limit Since you've read there. the scream, and if you like, happen to mill this card, you can add a tier limit trap. So let's show you a tier limit trap. Yeah, let's see a trap. What are we tutoring for? The tier limits meta noise. This is a trap card. If you control a Tier Elements monster or Visa Starfrost, target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Change it to face-down defense position. Then send one Tier Elements monster from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard 
by card effect, you can target one tier elements monster in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. You can uh, only use one tier elements meta noise effects per turn and only once that turn. Well, so if I put the tier elements haveness into the graveyard, does that trigger this? If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effects, except during the damage step, you can fusion. So basically, I can use the trap card to dump our uh, tier elements haveness into the graveyard and then fusion some uh, fusion summon something. Right. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. This is just a jank tutor deck. So putting the cards in hand, we put them into the graveyard instead. Well, then you return them back to the hand and then put them back into the deck and then fusion summon. Exactly. And we, yeah, we can just do this uh, story over and over again. Yeah. Okay. Who needs to shuffle cheat in Yu-Gi-Oh when you like you just dig for whatever the hell you want anyway? It's like it's no point. So I mentioned fusion summoning, but I haven't shown you a fusion monster yet. So let's show you a fusion monster. Oh yeah. And this is gonna be the last card of the archetype. Let's see, how, do, how do we win with this deck? Okay, tier elements kit Kalos. Aqua fusion effect. Uh one tier elements monster, one aqua monster. If this card is special summoned, you can take one tier elements card from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. You can target one monster you control, special summon one tier elements monster from your hand or graveyard. And if you do, send the targeted monster to the graveyard. If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effects, you can send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard. You can only use each effect of tier elements. Uh, Kit Kalos once per turn. Take one. So it's just more tutoring. <laughs> it's more tutoring. Like the deck doesn't stop to tutor. This deck looks insane. <laughs> this deck, you know, almost like by uh, by process of elimination, this has to be like the tier one deck. Now I would be so scared if you tell me that this is unplayable garbage. You. have You've drastically changed your mind from reading, like, the first couple cards than to reading the last couple cards. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, so it, like, to, it, at first, like, wow, this, this, this archetype sucks, and then I realized, oh, this is, like, Dredge, where, you know, the mechanic is dumb, but, uh, it's basically, like, basically Dredge is the type of mechanic. It's not, like, a tutor, but it's, like, a weird sort of card draw where everything you put in the graveyard can be resurrected for nothing. And so even though all the cards are trash, it's a ton of trash you get for free, and it turns into a, a gigantic monster. And so uh, same thing here. You know, you're putting things into the graveyard, but you do that to tutor for other cards, and you just tutor and tutor and tutor, and then all of a sudden you got, like, a tier elements Kit Kalos uh, staring you down into doom. So uh, I'm actually going to say... I'm going to say this is tier one now. Especially since it has so much text on it. I can't imagine it being tier 2 or tier 3 or whatever. Alright, well, if you think this one is tier 1 now, what does that say for the other two? That is so scary. Oh my god. I don't want to say that the Dark Magician deck was ever anything. Like, the <laughs> fact that, like, you, like, this is like the Yugi deck. This is the anime card. Would they have buffed up? Dark Magician enough to turn this into an actual archetype. Because frankly, I think this still looks like sort of garbage. But it's it's got a lot of synergy going for it. The original deck also has really good synergy. This uh, Melabrance of the Burning Abyss. Um, but the problem is, like, you can't win the turn that you you play it. Like, this is impossible. So while it has, like, a lot of things, it's doing a lot of stuff, in the end it does nothing. And if you pass the turn, you die. <laughs> Maybe for that reason alone, <laughs> I'm going to bank that <laughs> Konami said, like, okay, look everyone, R&D, you make this Dark Magician deck good. Because if you don't, like, we are in trouble. We need people to watch... That Yu-Gi-Oh anime, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yugi -Oh, Yu casts that Dark Magician constantly. Make that card good somehow. So I'm going to guess that this was like a good deck at one point. And I'm going to say that that uh, Malabrance of the Burning Abyss deck, this was, this was never, this is just some jank. It does a lot of things, but in the end it does nothing deck. I'm just going to, 
That's my final answer. Okay. You were you were correct on some, and then incorrect on others. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you were correct. Well, you were wrong. Let's put it this way: you were wrong okay. that Burning Abyss was never good. Bur Interesting. Burning Abyss used to be good, and is no longer okay. good. Burning Abyss yeah, so this was is the, a. Oh, this is the tier one that Burning was, Abyss used to, used be, to good. be like one of the best decks for like a six year period of time. It was one of the best Holy decks for crap, a really, really long. long time. Yeah, it it was a good playable deck for very, very long. Um, to the point where hey. they they did limit Beatrice, the rank six exceed with the six black dragon balls. They mm -hmm. it's limited to yes. one on the ban list. So was. Was it just a time period? Maybe I should have given it more credit because, I don't know, maybe there weren't as many turn one kills back then. So could you afford to just build up a large board and then pass? There were still, like, quite a bit of, of turn, of, like, you know, turn ones. Turn one, like, build a board big enough to where your opponent can't break it and they lose. But mm -hmm. that was a period of time where it was a little bit... I mean, it's still pretty back and forth right now, but that was a period of time where... Um, Konami just started ramping up the power level of cards, and Burning Abyss was like mm -hmm. right up there as one of the most powerful of the ramped up power of, of the ramped up power level. Um, and it just did a good job of just never dying. Like all of the cards recycle themselves and search other cards after they die. Yes. So in Yu Gi Oh, we call this floating, floating effects. So Graph floats mm -hmm. into Seer, and then Seer, when it goes to the graveyard, floats into Skarm, and then Skarm, when it goes to the graveyard, on the, on, on the end step, searches another copy of it, and then you just special summon them again, overload yeah. them for Dante. Da when Dante goes to the graveyard, Dante adds one back to hand, so like you, keep, you have this like, kind of never-ending cycle of burning Abyss cards, and it's super annoying. But like, how do you win? Like what's the like what's the like what's you win? the the route to winning with this deck? You win by like your opponent running out of cards to play. Uh, and, and flipping up trap cards, like you just play generic trap cards in your deck that are just good, and you just do the whole I'm never going to die thing, and then flip up trap cards to stop your opponent, kind of like a control deck, but it was kind of mid rangey in the fact that you can summon like two Dantes oh, okay. in the same turn, and then hit them for 5,000, and they both go to defense, but then when you, hit, when you kill the Dante, even the materials when they're sent to the graveyard under the Dante also trigger, so then you have like a stack that's like when you kill the Dante, now the Graph and the Seer are both underneath it, or you can go Dante, add back Graph, Graph, summon Seer from the, from the deck, and then um, Seer from the graveyard, trigger, summon Graph back out of the graveyard. And then you have, like, you basically, they, they basically did nothing to kill your board, even though they, 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 killed, they killed the Dante, but it really didn't accomplish anything. Gotcha, yeah. So they would just end up running out of resources after a while. Uh, and, the, and the Beatrice made it even scarier, because there's, an, there's another Burning Abyss monster I didn't show you named, um, named Farfa that when it's sent to the graveyard can exile an opponent's um, monster until the end phase. So mm -hmm. you can use the Beatrice on your opponent's turn because Beatrice is a quick effect to detach Graph or whatever and then send Farfa from your deck to the graveyard, interact with your opponent, and then Graph triggers summoning something else and then you flip a trap card, stop their next play, so it, it kind of was a control deck that lasted forever. That's how Burning Abyss kind of played. Gotcha. It sort of looks like it's just some... Uh, I never would have interpreted this as a control deck. Right. You, you would like, never I think know, so. But like mid rangey deck. It kind of... It, 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 you, you've, in the last video, you read Dark Hole. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls, right? Yeah. When Burning Abyss was a good deck, they brought Dark Hole back off the ban list after it was banned. And people realized that Dark Hole wasn't good. Again, because you, if you Dark Hole a couple Dantes on your opponent's board, you really did not accomplish anything. In fact, you helped them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it, it was kind of in that, in, that, in that way was starting to make Yu-Gi-Oh! as powerful as it is today because they power crept even Burning Abyss now. Oh, yeah, of course. So, uh, they, gotta keep, they gotta keep selling those Yu-Gi-Oh! packs. So the speaking of selling packs, you uh, Konami did try to make Dark Magician good 
but it was never good. Yeah, I could I could see this. <laughs> I could see they they tried really hard. Oh, did they try hard? It's like basically, how do we turn this vanilla creature into something amazing? And boy, do they have got they got a lot of cool looking cards here. But I guess if Dark Magician had just some text on it, it could make the difference. But uh, I guess the vanilla Dark Magician not good enough. Right. Yeah, definitely not good enough. It, it means that you have to play a vanilla in your deck, and you just never want to draw. Yeah. It's just, it's just really bad. Um. Now. The Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, the last card that I showed you of the Dark Magician archetype, was played as a generic mm -hmm. fusion monster in a lot of decks and was very powerful. Oh. Um, but because there's ways that yeah, you can. Yeah, the payoff like, is amazing. There's ways that you can like basically cheat it, cheat it out by sending the Dark Magician from your deck to the graveyard from, from a different card that I'm not going to mention. But uh, gotcha. it's a very good card. But even but even Dragoon itself got power crap. So it's it's not it. Even the boss monster that you can summon without even having to play Dark Magician monsters is now not good enough anyway. Yeah, so, like for me, these 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 two la these two archetypes, there was like a coin flip. I couldn't tell the difference between the two. They both have obvious synergy, and I was just banking the Konami. They were going to make Dark Magician great. <laughs> they had to. Their bottom line depended on it. Everyone's bringing Dark Magician to Yu-Gi-Oh Knights. What do you call it? What do you call F and M in Yu-Gi-Oh? Locals. Locals, like yep. I went to my local night. Lo okay, no, no, that's just, like local. That's like a local game store, right? You don't say locals. You don't say local night. You say locals. Just locals. Yes. So if I if I say I'm going to F and M, I'm going to locals. Yes. All right. Yeah. So like everyone's bringing Dark Magician to locals. We need to give support to this thing. Everyone's getting slaughtered. Yes, I know. Well, it still wasn't good enough. But that leaves us to Tyrlement, and boy, do I oh, yeah. have to tell you. Um, how would it make you feel if I told you that this is the best deck of all time? Holy crap! <laughs> so it's just like Dredge. Yeah, it's got this. It's yes. got the same uh, same reputation. Yes, this is the best deck of all time. Um, unironically. Interesting. Tier um, limits. Tier limits. Kit Kalos is banned. It's interesting. I never heard the word tier limits before until this show. I would think like the most dangerous Yu-Gi-Oh archetype of all time would have like rang somewhere in like I don't know the uh, on the internet somewhere no. somehow. I mean, if you go, if you go to like you know Reddit or some YouTube channel, some Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Yu YouTube channel, and you just say the word Kit Kalos, everyone just like <gasps> no Tyrlement, <laughs> <No. laughs> get no. out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Kit this Kalos. Was, this was probably the the most like oppressive tier zero format that ever existed. Um, whereas, like, it was a format that if you didn't play Tier Limit, you probably were losing. The engine is still there, right? The engine is still there. Actually, Meta, no Meta Noise and Scream are both at three, but you see Tier Limit's happiness here, the monster, that's limited yep. to one on the ban list. There's, there's two... Oh, wow. There's okay. two other Tier Limit's monsters. There's three of them that are all limited to one on the ban list. Currently. That's wild. So it's a highly restricted uh, archetype and still standing. Yes. So if the the thing is, if you use like Turlin's Havness to stop your opponent to use in response to your opponent's monster effect, and you mill three, there's there, it's almost impossible to not mill another copy of a Turlin's monster. Mm -hmm. So that when you do that, you mill a Turlin's monster, and then you can use that monster and any dark monster to summon any fusion monster out of your extra deck. It does not say that you have to summon a Turlin's fusion monster. It's any fusion monster. <laughs> so there's a card that I think we went over on a different on a different video a long time ago. El Shadal Winda is a level mm -hmm. five fusion monster that you can summon using a shadow monster and a dark monster, and Hafness and a bunch of them are dark. So all you need to do is mill a shadow monster and mill a, a Hafness or any of the other the other like two or three dark monsters that that trigger to fusion summon when you mill them. And summon El Shadow Winda, which says your opponent can only special summon one time per turn. Mm -hmm. Well, it says both of you can only special summon one time per turn. But you can do it on your opponent's turn. Like, if you're going second and your opponent's going first and they're trying to set up their board, you can summon Havnus, mill three, mill a Shadow Monster, and mill and mill another copy of a Tier Lent Monster, put them back to the bottom of your deck, and then summon Winda on your opponent's turn and they can no longer play the game. On your opponent's turn one. Like Synergy on your turn, synergy on your it's, opponent's exactly. turn. Not, not only that, but there's also other cards that you can play in Yu-Gi-Oh! That, um, that are called the Ishizu cards. They're, they're all, there's four different ones, and they're also all limited to one. 
<laughs> they they destroyed the whole deck. Everything's at one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because you tutor everything out anyway. Yes, you you. There are some non tutorable ones like the like the Ishizu mill cards. There's one of them that mm -hmm. says with this sent to the graveyard by card effect mill five. There's yeah. another one that says the exact same thing. Basically, digs for it anyway. Yes. There's another one that says the exact same thing. Mill five. Well, it says both players mm -hmm. mill five. And then, can you imagine playing a mirror match when a card says both players mill five? Oh God. Yeah, that that happened all the time. And then and then, then there's a, there's two more cards that you can play three of each of them. Well, they're limited to one now, but you can exile it from your graveyard at any point at instant speed to target three cards mm -hmm. in any graveyard and put them back to the deck. Yeah. So in okay. response to your opponent using a tier limit monster to fusion summon, you can, in response, exile the card, send this back to the deck to cancel out their fusion summon. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of back and forth of that too. And not to mention, do you remember the first card we went over? The field spell? When something goes back to the deck, you destroy a card your opponent controls? Yeah, that's right. And and then when you we, mill, when you, when you mill over meta noise and mill over scream, you're adding cards back to your hand. You're searching cards. You're searching yeah. draft cards, adding back cards, mm -hmm. and it just turns into a a mess of a. Uh, have you ever seen a stack in Magic that is like twenty cards in the stack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's that. Yeah, that's wild. But then they can't add anything once that stack ends. Because that chain, the chain, the chain's got to end at yes, some point. Yes, yes. Once the chain is resolving, it resolves all the way through, and you can't interrupt it like you can in Magic. But, but still, what were they thinking? What, what were they thinking when they made this archetype? I, I have no idea. That is a question that is probably unanswerable. You know, at least with Dredge, like the archetype didn't look obviously good at first but then as you know more cards got printed it got like busted really it started to get busted and more busted and more busted and very similar to how they limited cards to one in magic like if dredge was ever a problem they just banned the strongest dredge card dredge six and then dredge you know let dredge five and four right. like uh reign supreme and also one answer that they did in magic they started printing a ton of graveyard hate this tons right uh, like they're still printing graveyard hate and finally it's brought like a uh, Enough balance, I guess, to the game. That's not a problem in the super old formats, but still, Dredge is like a top deck in, uh, for example, Vintage, which is the closest thing to Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, maybe the most busted mechanic in both card games is just dumping your deck into your graveyard and then making use out of it. Yep, exactly. And by the time this video comes out, I will have it set up. But if you would like to be a guest on the show, but uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Anything, any any card game or whatever that you would like me to either to test me on or be tested on yourself, I'm going to have a Patreon section for if you would like to be on the show, to have people, if, if you want to be on the show as well. So like the video, subscribe if you do want to see more stuff like this, and maybe we'll have Nikachu back on the show to do a, a deck that 100% will for sure not be the best deck of all time, because we've already done that one. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, peace.